What's up, divas and divos? So you guys already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday, okay? So I don't even have my backdrop up today. I'm not even trying to do all of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to be like natural. Like, you know, we here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We here. We in the room. We talking. You know, it's chit-chat time. So, but my room is clean, okay? I did clean it up. You know what I'm saying? I did I did fold the laundry and put everything where it's supposed to be and stuff like that. And, you know, and yes, I do like stuffed animals. So majority of them are mine. Um, but a couple of them are my daughter, Mumsy's, because she likes to be in here too. So, you know, it is all good. So today's video... Um, it's going to be a long email, okay? So in case you guys are wondering how Real Talk is going, so far, so good. I have been getting a lot of emails. I'm not sure how much longer I'm going to be doing Real Talk because I feel like it has taken its course, you know what I'm saying? Like, meaning I have done this probably, I think, like three years on this channel. And before this channel, I did do it for like a couple years on my old channel. So I'm not really sure. I think it's kind of like taking its course. Um, and sometimes you have to move on to different things. And with that being said, you know, I sometimes feel that way about the hair videos too, because there's so many different videos on YouTube. It's kind of like saturated that, you know, as much time and work and effort that I put into doing the hair and doing the videos and editing, I don't really feel like my time that I put in it is well spent, meaning I do a lot and I don't get a lot in return, like as in views. And that goes to say the same thing for Real Talk. So I'm thinking that maybe I'm going to stop doing this after a while. You know, I don't want to feel like I'm forced to do anything and trust and believe I do love talking to you guys, but sometimes things run its course. So, you know, it is what it is. Now for the hair that I'm rocking today, because I'm pretty sure you guys are wondering what this is all about and, you know, things like that. Well, let me tell you guys, this is actually a mistake a mistake, like a literally a huge mistake that I made. Um, I didn't actually make the lace frontal, but it was sent to me by a wig company that I've never heard of before called YG Wigs. And I did want a platinum blonde wig because I really had good intentions on doing like battle of the blonde wigs. And I do have one video up and, you know, each blonde wig comes in a different format, a different color you know what I'm saying? Different pigmentation. So even if you ordered a 613, doesn't mean you're going to get like that 613 that's pale blonde. Sometimes you get that pissy yellow color, which is like Goldilocks blonde. And I don't really find that to be too attractive. And this is kind of what it looked like when I did get it. It was kind of like more or less on that very yellowish golden um, Goldilocks and three bears kind of color. So the first initial thing that I did was I took my shimmer lights or fake shimmer lights by Sally's Beauty Supply and I, you know, wet the hair, I washed the hair. I, I just wet it, basically washed it, you know, drenched the hair, what made sure it was wet. And I began to pour this purple shampoo onto the hair. To my surprise, it gave the hair purple tones. The hair was purple. And I tried to scrub it out. I then tried to just put purple shampoo in water first and then soak the wig so that way it can evenly coat the hair and make it like this lavender color. And it somewhat didn't somewhat work. So I then had to turn around and take the hair and kind of like diffuse some of the purple tones with fresh lemons, dish detergent by Dawn, and um, clarifying shampoo. I did this three times and it did take some of it out. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So then after that, I said, let me go to Sally's and get some toner. And I ended up purchasing the Wella Color Charm, Color Charm Wella Toner in T18 so I can get that pale ash blonde. And I used a 20 developer with honeys. It turned the hair gray, which it is right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I sort of kind of did like it. But if you've seen my Instagram post, the roots were not gray. I mean, excuse me, the roots were not dark. They were all gray. And a girl like me really needs to have like some, some type of dark roots. Like I need them to be dark. I didn't want them to be black. I didn't want them to be 
off black. I didn't want them to be too dark brown. So I did get some suggestions and I ended up using the Clairol Professional Permanent Hair Dye for gray hair, which was in the color 7NN for natural. And this is the color that it gave me, which was perfect because, honey, I didn't want it too dark. And I like this color brown and it worked out really well in my favor. Um, so I just used a toothbrush to kind of like do it all. And I did do the edges too, because even though it's a lace front, girl, if I pull it up, I really don't want the grays to just show. So I wanted to make it look as natural as possible. And I did do some of the traps. So this is the outcome of the wig that I got. And the mistake actually turned out really good. Funny thing though, is when I try to do something literally on purpose, it turns out to look like a piece of crap. Okay. And then when I do something by accident, like this, it turns out to be awesome. So I do like the color a lot. And um, yeah, I like it a lot. And there'll definitely be a video up on it this coming weekend um, because I have to edit it and shit like that. But other than that, it's cool beans with me. I'm going to jump right into this real talk because it's going to be a long one. And I was deciding on whether or not to do a synthetic wig video today or Thursday, but I'll probably do that tomorrow because I'm not really trying to take this wig off right now. So you guys, and I'm kind of tired too. If you have a real talk that you want me to read on YouTube, you can definitely send me an email to MuppetIsMyLovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. If you want to change the names of the people that you're talking about or referring to or yourself in the email, you can go ahead and just let me know that. But nine times are 99.9% .9 of the time. If you don't do that, I'm going to change it on my own. You know, like 99.9% percent baby zaddies baby zaddies i will change that for you if you don't tell me you changed it so you guys let's jump right into this real talk and let me know in the comments below what do you think of this color and um yeah i had another pissy yellow wig like this was like really pissy yellow and um wait until you see the transformation of this one um yeah it looks like a million times better um I can't do the, the piss yellow color. I just can't. No. Huh? 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 What? Damn. Damn. Okay, you guys. So like I said, this is a very long email. Okay. So please forgive me if I'm not like looking up because this is long and I'm so happy that she's put it in huge letters like this so that I could see it better. So let's get into this. Hi, I'm sorry that this email is so long. Maybe the longest email you have ever read, but if you don't make a video, please at least email me back when you can. Thank you. So I'm just going to get right into it. I've been in a strange relationship for 10 years. I am now in my late 20s, 29. I know I'm old. And she is in her late mid 20s, 27. We met when I was 18 or 19 years old. And she is two years younger than me. Regardless, we have been together for 10 years with a lot of issues. I don't even know where to start, sis. So this relationship was doomed from the beginning. We met and we are from two different lifestyles. She grew up privileged and I grew up in the hood. But I was a good kid and I cared about manners and being a good person ultimately. And she was the opposite, ultimately, regardless of upbringing. When I first met her, she was, in a, she was a manipulative person and she used her emotions and ability to play victim to, manip to manipulate people. She still does, but just in other ways, like she's gotten smarter about doing it. In the first year of being together, it was cool. I was somewhat sane and she was not with her manipulative weird shit she used to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. She was not she was not with her manipulative weird shit she used to do. That for the sake of the email, I won't even dive into. But it was weird enough and fake enough and strange enough and manipulative enough to chase away a lot of her friends. A lot of them got tired of dealing with her and behind her back, they discuss it all the time. I remain constant and consistent in her life because I tend to want to help and hold on to people that I love. 
a little bit about me. I'm adopted. I come from a very broken, abusive biological family. I was burnt by my biological mother, third degree burns. She also placed an iron on my face, which was the last abusive thing she did to me before they placed her in prison. My real family neglected me outside of my grandmother, the best human to have ever existed in my life. After my mom went to prison when I was six years old, my grandmother died of cancer and my life blew up from there. I was ripped away from my family, from everything I knew and thrown into foster care for a year and passed around a lot and sexually abused and neglected for a paycheck. I lived with my mother, the woman who eventually adopted me for a year and she adopted me when I was eight years old. But after that, she was neglective and emotionally abusive and mean and cold, controlling and controlling. And I forgave her because I know she was doing the best she knew how, but ignoring your, your kid, not helping them with homework and putting the TV as something more than valuable than your child is abuse. It didn't make me strong. To be honest, it broke me. It broke me because I needed love and care and attention after all of the abuse that I've been through. Fast forward some fast forward some i was severely bullied in high school my mom always said to me ignore them i got my hair pulled daily eventually my hair fell out from stress and i got made fun of i didn't have the best clothes my clothes barely fit and i got made fun of the teachers didn't do anything no matter how much i told on the children i was in many fights that i did not start and i didn't want to be in mainly because i didn't stick up for myself i didn't know how to stick up for myself I was literally a punching bag in middle and high school, verbally and physically abused. I was told I was ugly and worthless every day and I would come home to my hoarding mother's house and be ignored and left to be by myself until the next day and so on and so forth. My mom held a lot of grudges. I was yelled at a lot because she held grudges against me for things I didn't mean to do, like breaking a piece of the furniture, playing by myself on the furniture when I was eight, et cetera. Total accident, by the way. But now that I am 29 years old writing this to you, I understand. Um, now that I'm 29 writing this, you'll understand as you read on what I mean. She still, my mom was still angry about the damn banister I broke when I was nine years old. I would always say, please, mom, let's move past this and forgive each other because life is so short. I tell you all this just to explain a bit of my past so you can understand what I'm going through now. I was dating a girl who I met when I was 18 or 19. She cheated on me a year or so into our relationship, and that wasn't her first attempt, technically. Before that, she tried to share her body with a kid we used to hang out with in our mutual friend's backyard, and I caught her. I'm writing this, and I'm wondering if she actually ever truly took me seriously romantically, ever. Before the first time she cheated on me, she also tried to fuck mutual friends, let's call him Dick. And Dick felt uncomfortable about it, and he let me know about what she had done. I confronted her and found out this was all true. But to get back on the correct timeline, she cheated a year or so into our relationship with a female, and shortly after that, I lost it. I threw and broke her phone. I know it was wrong, but that's what I did. But the reason I was so mad is because we had an entire three-hour conversation in her car arguing, and me asking her to tell me the truth. She's always been a liar. Always been a liar. It hasn't changed. Even 10 years later, she lies about every and anything she can. After that, I had a mental breakdown, mainly because shortly after her cheating and lying, my brother committed suicide. I had a mental episode that lasted a few years. I heard voices. I went crazy. I pretended to be someone else who abused me in the past, a person who I also thought I loved a school teacher who I met in high school for a while. It's like I didn't even want to be myself. I wanted to die. The only way to live was to be someone else, to cope somehow. I know it sounds crazy, but this is real life and shit happens to all of us. And sometimes we have these awful lives and it doesn't have a pretty fluff and happy fairy tale ending. Sometimes there's dark times and through transparency and honesty and work, we can work through them. I regret ever being that way. It lasted a few years, my mental breakdown, but I honestly didn't know what was going on or what was wrong with me. Some things I believed were real. Some of the things re were real, but the lines were blurred in reality because of my mental breakdown. I broke down. I don't know why I did all of that. I just was trying to cope. I was angry. I would fight. I would cry. I hated everything and everyone. I wanted someone to lean on, but the only person I had to lean on 
was her the 10 years that we spent. Let's call her Leah. Now we're talking about the girl that's two years older than her. My mom was too depressed to help me with my own depression. It was like that my whole childhood. I had my own depression and abuse to deal with, but I had to take care or be cog uh, or be cog non-existent of hers. Right? Cognizant of hers. She stayed in bed. My mom stayed in bed all day and just watched TV and yelled at me to refill her cup to get her ice. I felt like a say I felt like a slave, a fuck up, and worthless, and I wanted to commit suicide. I tried to escape my own mind and forgive Leah for the cheating and the lying and the coldness. When my brother died a few nights after I was at her house and I slept in day I, <clears throat> excuse me. When my brother died a few nights after I was at Leah's house and I had slept in day I had slept in bed for days, maybe even a week. The timeline is blurry. I fell asleep finally after days only to be woken up by her masturbating on the floor in front of me. I kid you not, she was masturbating on the floor in front of me. I thought to myself, if we are in a relationship because we were and I'm in pain, I've been crying off and on and spacing out. How could she do that? I've been there for her. But when my brother died, she was really there for me. But when she finally was there and I finally feel safe enough to fall asleep, she's masturbating on the floor right next to me. As soon as I fall asleep, I hear the buzz of her vibrator. I don't know why, but that shit hurt me so bad just catching her masturbating. I've always thought that in a relationship, you are a team. How could she even mentally be selfish enough or nasty enough to do that shit right in front of me? How could she even be in a state of arousal anyway? So here's the scoreboard, April. Leah at this point has proven herself a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, a serial masturbator, apparently a bad friend, a bad romantic partnership, a bad romantic partner, and selfish. And yet still at this point, I feel like I have no one else and no other family and no other options. Fast forward a little while later, my mom and I are fighting and arguing and living at home just isn't working for me. I've decided I've done. I'm, I've decided I'm done. It's time to kill myself because I'm suffering. I'm 20 at this point and Leah and I thought it'd be smart to move out together and get away. So we found a cheap apartment and we moved out and in, in, in together. I moved out from my mom's and Leah moved out from her parents and we were together. I know what you might be thinking. This is a recipe for disaster and it was. She lied about so much everything, even simple shit that doesn't even matter. Meanwhile, I'm working on my mental health and I'm struggling, but I'm trying. I'm trying to find peace. I'm trying to be a better person. I'm trying to do all of it on my own without professional help because I tried therapy as a kid and it was trash. It was a joke. Fast forward some more. We are both mature now, at least to some degree. At least I have. I've become more aware of how I've caused others pain. I've changed for the greater good. We've moved into a new apartment a better apartment. I'm 26 at this time and she's 24 and she's still a liar. She never communicates. I had sat down with her many times pleading to communicate with her because in my mind, I felt like the most important thing in a relationship is communication. That's the only way we both could grow together is to communicate and to try to work things out. I'm, trans I'm transparent and trying to be vulnerable with her again. But always, but she always doesn't seem to care. She's emotionalist, and I guess I got tired of fighting. Fighting for my mental health and fighting with her to basically just love herself and love me and care more about people around her. Spend time with her family and stop treating people like shit. I don't write it here. <clears throat> I won't write it here, but you would be surprised the selfish shit she does to other people outside of me. I've tried to work on it and talk and communicate, but when I just thought I can't do this anymore, I feel defeated, I tried to leave. I worked up the courage to leave. Mind you, every time I tried to leave the relationship, she cry and want me to stay. So if you truly want, so if that's truly what she wanted me to stay, then why not change the bad behaviors and patterns and work on it with me? As a team, why not? Why not stop lying and cheating and start caring and being empathetic? When her dogs died, I let her cry on me and I held her. When she cries, when I cry, she usually just ignores me and just chews me off, basically, cold away. 
Anyway, I got tired. I started to feel numb. I fought so much at this point for us. I fought to forgive my mom, my adopted mom. I fought to live and now I'm tired. I just want someone to come home to who can hold me and show me I've been deprived of the seven years I've been with this one girl. At this point, I'm ready to leave. I met a guy online named, um, let's call him Canada because he was from Canada and we had chemistry. He was white as fuck. I mean like the typical white guy, stereotype and corny and safe. And I like that. I knew someone from my past that knew him and I trusted him. He communicated, he listened to me, he cared, he was there if I called him. He was well off, not that matter, not that it mattered, but it was a plus. He was mature and he had similar values. I had a huge had a he had a huge he has a huge loving open family. We started talking on the phone and staying up late and talking for hours. And then he flew in to visit me. He was who he said he was, and the attraction was immediate on both sides. I thought he was so cute and I was happy, but I wasn't sure if me and her were together, me and Leah were together anymore. To be honest, I didn't care. I wasn't getting what I wanted with Leah and I've and been wanting. So a real relationship was non-existent with Leah. I was in love with Canada, but that, uh, excuse me. I was in love with Canada, but that failed quickly as I found out he was bragging to his friends that he had one in the States and one in Canada. Talking about two girls, which I forgave him for eventually. Our relationship was still brand new. It still hurt, but I let it go and went to stay with him in Canada. It reminded me of her cheating on me. It was a trigger, but I loved him and I wanted to try. But then I found out that he lied. He lied about losing his career. He was a CFO of the company, maybe she said CFO, but I don't know if he meant CEO of a company. And instead of telling me and confiding in me, he lied because Canada is from a port, um, for, because he is from a Portuguese family and was raised with very traditional values that the man keeps things like this from his wife. Whoa. So wait a minute. Canada, the guy, Canada, his name is Canada. Canada is from a, a Portuguese family and he was raised with a very traditional family values. That means Men keep things like this from their women. But I overreacted and I've lost that relationship ultimately because I couldn't trust him anymore because of my issues with liars. Fast forward again. And girl, I know this is long and I'm trying to condense 10 years into a few paragraphs. But I am now 28. Leah is now 27. It's 2017. We have been off and on for so long now. But obviously there is still something because the thought of leaving is hard. And maybe it's because I've known her for so long and because I feel like she's all that I have. For a year, I made myself valuable. I tried my hardest to forgive her for everything she had done in the past to me. I really am trying. I slowed down on asking her where she was going and what she was doing and tried to trust her. My mom was getting sicker and sicker and sicker and was unable to care for herself. And this is the most important part. So please hear this out. I'm still struggling with my mom, but she's dying. She's sick. But we didn't know how sick until right before she died. These doctors aren't shit and didn't care about my mom. One told me people get old and they just die. My mom was 71 years old. That's not old. I again feel like the only person I have is this girl, Leah. I just wanted her to be there for me and help me through this because this is now the hardest time of my life. Two weeks before my mom dies, I see Leah on the phone go off. And I had this gut feeling, even though I never. Um, go through her phone but because of her past with lying and cheating I had a gut feeling and so I checked her phone it was very it was a very big mistake because it was an email from a guy she had slept with Re rewind so a week or so before that she had a mysterious bump very very close to her vagina in her groin area it was weird it was a weird one that was not normal in the email the guy was talking about his bumps she asked him if they were clearing up and she goes on to say, is he using a cream? So immediately in my mind, I'm like, this bitch is cheating and has an STD. I started reading their older emails back and forth where she's bashing me, sharing my deepest secrets with him, tearing me apart, tearing me down. Back and forth, they've been talking for a year or more. 
I confronted her about it and she lied for a while, but after a lot of arguing, finally she admitted to cheating. She says she cheated in February. Immediately, I'm thinking all of the dates, all of the kisses, all of the dancing together and sharing experiences, and all of the effort I put in to trust her was a lie. And it was, April. I wanted to kick her fucking ass. I've been so stressed trying to find a nursing home for my mom before she passed away. Even though I didn't want her to know, excuse me, even though I didn't want her in, in one, she wanted to be in one because she needs um, because needs were very serious. Her needs were very serious. It was deemed medically necessary. She needs 24 seven medical care. I'm doing everything on my own. We are trying to figure out how to afford to get her into a nursing home. She's sitting in this shitty nursing home that doesn't give two shits about its people. And despite everything, my mom, the one who has adopted me is my life. So I have been under unimaginable stress. I've just gotten over bronchitis and flu symptoms. I had that for weeks before uh, my cat was sick and a month prior and I was worried he would die after emergency vet visit. And this bitch is selfish enough as she always has been to only give a fuck about herself and this guy and again lied. Fast forward. She tells me it's just to see if he, she's gay or not. Whoa. Fast forward. Leah tells me it's just to see if she's gay or not that it was just one time back in February, as if that makes it any better. We fought and argued, and she still isn't communicating. She even went as far enough to break her phone so I couldn't contact him. I said I needed closure. I wanted to speak to him, and she breaks her phone in the midst of yelling as she walks out the door. This girl has had selfishly so much control over my life because in some ways I've given it to her in exchange for false security, the hope that somehow, some way I would have family within her, holding on to the years I've dedicated my life to her. And I know it's not okay. In my depression over this, I ended up calling my mom a month before she passes away. My mom wasn't even fully there mentally. She was losing it as her body was breaking down. She was seeing things, hallucinating, and in so much pain. Fuck. And I called her because the pain, and I called her because of the pain caused by Leah's actions to me. I told my mom I may or may not be gay or bi. I feel forced out of the closet because I literally had no one else to call about the news that I had been cheated on, that I was hurting. I called my mom crying in the car, and I explained everything to her. For about two hours with my mom in silence. At the end of the conversation, my mom said to me, I've changed my name to Hope. Hope, don't contact me anymore. I found out later this was her sickness talking. Because about two weeks after that, when I went to visit her in the nursing home, she was out of it, not even herself, not talking or acting the same. And then she was in somewhat of like a coma like not waking up or opening her eyes. I cried every night. I was at the hospital despite the times that Leah gripped about talk, taking me to see my mom. Oh, excuse me, <clears throat> griped about taking me to see my mom. She didn't really want to take me to the hospital to be with my mom or go downtown to help me with my mom's house, getting my affairs together because she was worried about gas money and herself. Damn. She was my only ride and only friend. I literally didn't talk to anyone else in my town because of years of depression. So I had no way and no one. And we have had bad public transportation. And we have bad public transportation in my city. She made everything so much more difficult for me and doesn't care. She didn't care. I say this all the time to her. You stole so much time from me and my mom, either from me trying to convince her to take me to the hospital or pleading for me to focus on us. She didn't help, and I've been now forced to come out through the pain. And now my mom is sicker. Part of that, part of that I think, is because of me, because I was her hope, and she lost hope in me. Because after coming out, things with her health accelerated so fast. She was in a month-long coma, and all of a sudden, I was in this position to make all these decisions I felt I couldn't make in effect. I couldn't. I couldn't handle her affairs. Although it was all being thrown at me because I was the only next of kin, I watched her die. And on December 21st at 4 p.m., days before Christmas, as I got the call April, that she was cold red. 
I rushed to the hospital, that terrible underfunded shitty staffed at hospital, and I watched her die, April. I watched the love of my life, my mom, the only person in this entire world unconditionally die right in front of me. I didn't even get to say goodbye. The last conversation I had with her, April, was me coming out and her saying to never contact her again. Her life left her body in the hospital and my soul went with it, April. I cried and I screamed and I begged and I negotiated with the doctor to please not give up, to continue reviving her because it was so obvious they wanted me to say, okay, you could stop trying to revive her, but I couldn't. It's August 29th and I'm still mentally in that hospital begging them not to stop. It's like the world has kept on moving around and the time has continued. It's almost been a year. I had my 29th birthday in April without my mom. I made new friends and couldn't call her in June. I started searching back to school in August, but I'm still in December, April, December 21st. I have no one truly. I still live with Leah. Sometimes I think things are better, and then there's days today where I am reminded that I can't be complacent where she neglects me. Neglects me. For example, there are days I cry about my mom or her cheating, and she can be right next to me on the same couch and not care at all. Look directly at me and not give a fuck that I'm crying or that I'm sad. If the roles were reversed, I'd be there for her. But she's so cold, and it's making my mental state worse. I hate her, April. I hate her. Some days, if not most days, I hate this girl. I wish I were dead a lot of the time, and it's mainly because of her and the way she treats me and everything she has done to me and everything in my life has a cumulative, a cumulative that has ever happened. I guess I wrote this to ask you, what should I do? I don't know how to be independent. I'm on the spectrum between, by the way, Asperger, Asperger's or high functioning autism. Asperger's, wait, how do you say this? I'm on the spectrum, by the way, of Asperger's or high functioning autism. And it's hard to maintain a job. I am really smart though and very talented. Lee and I share a car. Whenever I have tried to get a job, she doesn't want me to. And she makes it incredibly hard by saying stuff like, well, how are you going to get to work in this cold? like you aren't using my car. So I'm struggling trying to be independent. Please help me figure out what to do. Should I leave Leah and ultimately be alone? And if I should, then how? If I can't find my independence. I attached a few pictures of me, one dolled up, the Phantom of the Opera one, the rest regular, a picture of me and Leah. I couldn't find a good picture of her that wasn't blurry. And that is recent. So here's a link to a video of mine. She, she shows up in. You don't have to watch it. Just go to the timestamp to see her mo more recent. Also, please don't share the pictures of me or my video on my YouTube channel. I've let myself go a little, as you can tell in my video, if you've watched it due to depression. I'm working to get back in shape and find myself again. Wow. <laughs> okay, so. Whew. That like really took a lot out of me, not because it was long, but because of the things that she was going through. And like this, the part alone with her talking about her mom passing away, that just broke me down. Like for real, like I try not to cry because I just, nobody don't really want to cry, but man, like I feel so bad for her because like she's a beautiful girl. Like nobody should be treated like, like this, like seriously, like nobody should be treated like like an animal like to me to me she's being treated like an animal for one it's already hard enough if you've been adopted okay it's hard because being adopted you feel like you don't have a place sometimes and i mean like i I'm, i've never been adopted but i can only imagine like i have my aunt who was adopted into our family and though she loves my ex-grandmother because she was not my biological grandmother she was my grandfather's second wife she still felt like you know she still felt like she didn't belong you know what i'm saying and what 
person doesn't want to know their biological mother or father, even if they are taken care of really well by the family that's adopted them, they still want to know where they came from. So there is a part of them that doesn't feel like they belong. And though she does know, she never gave me her name for this email, but we just going to call her Alisa. Even though Alisa does know her biological mom, she was mistreated. She was burnt, third degree burns. Her mom burnt her with an iron. She mistreated her. And her mom, her biological mom, went to prison for six years. And then she was passed around in the foster care system to be sexually abused, mentally abused, verbally abused, physically abused. Like, she's passed around like a rag doll, like a shelter animal. Like, come on now. And then when she finally did get into a home that someone really wanted her, this woman who adopted her, adopted her, you know, she was kind of like, not cold and mean, but maybe somewhat cold and mean because she was just trying her hardest. But yet and still, she was putting Alicia in front of the TV and just allowing the TV to allow her child to grow up. She's been through a lot and I can relate somewhat. You know, I've never been sexually abused, uh, but I have been mentally and physically abused. You know what I'm saying? And that shit hurts. Like it hurts to a point where sometimes you don't know whether you're coming or you're going. You don't know whether you are loved or not loved. You're wanted or not wanted. And it's sad because here she is in this fucking toxic ex relationship with this girl, Leah, that really don't look like much of anything. Like, I'm sorry, but it isn't about looks all the time. But when you allow someone to dog you out like that, then this shit is about the fucking looks and the inside. It's about the inside and the outside. Like for real, Alyssa can do a million times better. And then on top of that, you got this girl, her, her girlfriend lying to her. They've been together for 10 years. She's lying to her. She's cheating on her. She's manipulative. She's just a fucking punk bitch and not talking about Alyssa, but her girlfriend Leah. Like who is so manipulative and you know it's a pathological liar she reminds me so much of my cousin because she just makes up stories she's lies and lies and lies to the point where you ever meet somebody that lies so fucking much that they start believing their own lies and that's when it becomes really serious like bitch you're a pathological liar you need to chill out like you know phase that down a little bit let's stop reaching okay and just chill the fuck out let's snap back to reality but you know with some people that shit just builds up in their mind like you know maybe you got a mental motherfucking problem but here's the thing she's been with this girl leah for 10 years because she feels like she doesn't have anybody that's the only friend she has that's the only family she has despite her mom who has passed away no sweetheart it's not your only friend that bitch ain't your friend at all this is your enemy. Leah is your worst motherfucking enemy. She is the devil in disguise sitting on your motherfucking couch, okay? That's what this bitch is. She's not a friend. Friends don't do shit like that. Friends don't hurt each other. People that really care for you do not hurt you intentionally. You know what I'm saying? Like when you are intentionally, intentionally hurting someone, that means that you do not give two fucks about them. And it's sad because you're going through something that is really drastic and traumatic. And here it is. You got this girl, Leah, who you're leaning on for support yet. And still she ain't giving you not one ounce of support. She's not showing that she cares, but when she needs a shoulder to lean on, you are loaning her yours, okay? You're rubbing her back. You're telling her things are going to be okay. But when it comes back to you, she could care less. She's just like, okay, I don't even see this going on. Is she over there crying? Oh, I'm just going to continue to sit here and watch TV. Let me tell you something. As long as you allow a motherfucker to treat you like shit, they are going to treat you like the shittiest shit there is, okay? They are going to take that shit to the, to the, to the, to the up to go far beyond treating you like shit. As long as you allow someone to treat you like dirt, then they're going to treat you like dirt. We all go through shit in life and we all need someone. Sometimes we need to just be alone. Now, when you in one relationship that's toxic, that shit was like cyanide, like straight up that relationship that she's in with Leah right now is straight cyanide. Fuck toxic. It's cyanide. That shit about to kill you real quick. And on top of that, she's thinking about killing herself. She's thinking about suicide. And then from one toxic relationship, you meet somebody online 
and he lives in another country in Canada and he flies in to see you and you guys are all lovey-dovey and you're in love until you find out that he's got someone else on the side, okay? Not only does he got someone else on the side, but he's bragging about the shit to his friends, but he's also a liar. You go and you stay with him, Alyssa, in Canada and you come to find out that all of these things that he's done told you is a bunch of fucking lies. And now you're like feeling like you're trapped. You got this girl over here, Leah, lying. And you got this dude named Canada lying. And here you are in the middle. And all it's doing is closing you in. You are just getting closed in. You ever see one of those things like in scary movies and the wall just keeps moving and moving and eventually if you don't fucking move or find a way out you get crushed it smacks you and you fucking dead right you know what i'm talking about the moving walls and you in that room and you got to fight for your life to try to find the code or the way to get the fuck out because if you don't your ass is going to be part of that wall that's what the fuck it is but unfortunately for leah's sake it ain't coming from just one direction this bitch is coming from both directions Leah, I mean, excuse me, for Alyssa's sake, it's coming from both directions. We got Leah right here as a wall, and we got Canada right here, and he's the wall. And it's just moving in slowly, slowly, slowly. And she's in the middle. And pretty soon, it's all it's going to do is splatter her, which sucks. So at least, you know what I'm saying, you got to get out of that trapped-in situation. So now you have nobody but Leah, okay, Alyssa? And you did say that you met friends. The guy from Canada, named Canada, what? He ended up being a liar and an untrustworthy motherfucker. This is the problem with people. When you're in one bad relationship, they find an outlet to be in another relationship with someone that cares about them. You know what I'm saying? So like, it's like, okay, I left this bad relationship. And I'm gonna just, I got a bad relationship going on right now in my home. I'm gonna just get online and find someone to talk to. And then they get into another relationship and then they leave that bad relationship just to go to another relationship that's just as shitty. Maybe not as shitty or maybe worse or, you know what I'm saying? In general, it's a shitty ass relationship because you didn't give yourself time to learn who you are. You didn't give yourself one time to heal. You didn't give yourself two time to love yourself. You didn't give yourself three time to learn who the fuck you are, okay? This is what I'm talking about. We have to learn to move forward, not move forward and into the flame of fire, move forward and away from the shit. When you're in a relationship with somebody that's bad for you, that's suicidal for you, that's fucking cyanide for you, that means you have to get out of that relationship. I don't give a fuck how bad you need someone to talk to. Sometimes talking to people is okay. Sometimes talking to yourself is just even better. You know what I'm saying? Meaning... I got this bad relationship right here with this bitch Leah who's treating me like pure D shit. This bitch is over here masturbating right on the side of the bed while I'm finally have fallen asleep after, you know what I'm saying, my brother has committed, um, has died and you over here playing with yourself, okay? What type of shit? First of all, there's a time and a place for every motherfucking thing. For real. And when somebody is going through something serious and so detrimental to them, bitch, you should not be on the other side of the bed playing in your motherfucking stuff, okay? That's just not what we should be doing. We should be consoling our spouse, okay? Not trying to get off. You know what I'm saying? Like, who the fuck does that? That right there is some creepy shit. Like, I'm not saying masturbating is creepy because it's not, but the way it went down, that's 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 total disrespect. Fuck creepy. It's laid out total disrespect on Leah's part that was total disrespect for what she did but here you got this disrespectful ass bitch that's doing masturbating while you are in like a state of shock and you are going through some shit then you got the bitch cheating on you and she got bumps on her motherfucking coochie lips like okay but she's telling you she cheated on you because she needs to know she's really 100% gay let me tell you something if I find out you got any type of warts genital warts I'm not fucking with you, okay? If Leah got some type of gentle towards, bitch, don't fuck with her, okay? Why the hell would you want to have any type of STD that you could have avoided? Now, one, you're already depressed. You're already going through a whole bunch of shit, and now you got to go out and get checked because you may have an STD from a fucking lying, cheating, manipulative bitch that ain't even worth your time. Let me tell you something. Life is short. 
and I refuse to waste any more of my time on shortcomings, okay? I'm not about to sit around and wait for anybody to do nothing for me. I'm not around, about to sit around and wait for anybody to make me happy. I'm not about to sit around and wait for somebody to give me a bag of money. We have to do shit on our own. If we want to get ahead and we want to be about something, we have to do this shit on our own. We cannot wait for motherfuckers to do things for us. Happiness starts within, okay? This is where happiness starts. You cannot rely on anybody to do anything for you, let alone try to make you motherfucking happy, okay? And now you're trying to figure out how to get to work, y'all share a car. That's the number one mistake, okay? If you ain't married to a motherfucker, then I don't think that you guys should be sharing a car. And even then, so if you're married to a motherfucker, sharing a car is still not a good idea because one person want to go here and then the next person want to go there and then we start clashing and then it becomes an issue and then we arguing about shit that just really could have been avoided, okay? So here's what my opinion is on what the fuck you need to do, Alyssa. For one, I understand you're going through shit. We all go through shit. I have had my own problems in life where I have ended up being depressed. I have ended up being in situations where I've had to be medicated. You know what I'm saying? But you pop out of that eventually, especially if you learn to love yourself and learn who the fuck you are. Okay. One, Leah is no good for you, Alyssa. She's really no good for you. She is straight up cyanide poison to you. Okay. She's poison. It's not about getting into a relationship because you're saying, well, am I ultimately going to be alone? It's not about being in a relationship. You got to be in a relationship with yourself first before you be in a relationship with anybody. You know what I'm saying? And with that being said, meaning you got to know who the fuck Alyssa is. You got to figure out what t what ticks her off and what makes her happy, what she wants to do with her life before you can allow anybody to try to make you motherfucking happy. You're never, no one's never going to make you happy if you cannot make your own self happy, straight up. If you cannot learn to love yourself and learn to make your own self motherfucking happy, nobody else can. Regardless of how good of a person they are and how good they treat you, they can't make you happy until you learn to make your own self fucking happy. And with this girl, Leah, that you're with, y'all share an apartment, y'all share a car with, okay, that's fine and dandy, true indeed. However, there are so many different outlets and ways to get the fuck out of this abusive relationship because this is what the fuck it is. I'm glad that she didn't say the bitch was putting her hands on her because then I would have said, listen, Alyssa, you gonna have to take this little scrawny bitch by the neck and let her know what time it is. However, as long as you allow yourself to lean on you and as long as Leah knows that you lean on her, on her for comfort and love and strength, this bitch is going to continuously shoot you the fuck down because she knows and feels that you need her. When someone knows that you need them and you're the only thing that they've got, that's when you become vulnerable in a way that you really don't want to become vulnerable. That's when you become used. That's when you become a doormat, okay? And that's when you become heartbroken and confused and then you go through shit that you could have totally avoided. Now, let me tell you something. You, you're trying to go back to school and you got a job and you just want to get out of the situation. You should have been out of the situation a long time. 10 years is a long motherfucking time, but spending another 10 years with this person is even worse, okay? Spending another fucking couple of days and weeks with this person is worse. She's not worth your time. She's definitely not worth your mental state of mind, okay? Now, therapy may not work for some people because some people are not ready. When I say you're not ready, meaning, you ain't got it all together in here and up here with your own self. You have to be a strong-willed person to be able to sit and talk to somebody about your own fucking problems. A lot of people can't do that because they don't want to hear what that unbiased person has to say to them. They don't want to hear that shit. A lot of times people want to hear what you want to tell them. I want to hear what you, I want you to tell me what I want to hear. This is what they this is why there's an issue with people going to therapy. I have been to counseling and I have been to therapy. Yeah, true indeed. I sat there and I listened. And you know what? True indeed. I may not have been 100% honest all the time either. And that's the issue. We can't be 100% honest with a therapist until we are 100% honest with ourselves. And with that being said, Alyssa, the first thing that you need to do for you is to pack your shit up and go into a woman's shelter. 
I know some people may say a shelter. Let me tell you something. Shelters ain't always that bad and shelters are temporary. Don't mean that you're going to be there for the rest of your motherfucking life. Women's shelters and shelters in general do help us. They help the population. I've told you guys on several occasions, I have been in a shelter before and they have helped me. Okay. For many things. All right. It wasn't because I didn't pay my rent. It wasn't anything like that, but it was a domestic violence shelter and had nothing to do with my husband. Okay. It wasn't even him, but they were very helpful and they pointed me in the right direction. They gave me outlets so that I could get help for me and my children. Okay. Well, I didn't have a bunch of kids at the time, but you know what I'm saying? For me and my kid. So they're, they're a resource and they are very resourceful and they are very helpful. You, you, you can't just sit around and continuously be amongst this person's presence because Leah's presence isn't really with you. This bitch is trying to figure out if she's 100% gay. Is she fucking men? You know what I'm saying? Is she fucking sharing her body with other people? She didn't cheat on you numerous times. Let me tell you something. You got one motherfucking time to cheat on me. If you get that dick up to anybody and you cheat on me one time, you got... One motherfucking time, okay? Because I'm being nice by giving you one time. And I'm not even being nice. I'm trying to work through the shit with you. But you got one time to cheat on me. And if you fucking continuously cheat on me, then that means that's a, that's a pattern and it's a problem, okay? You may not feel like you're the problem, but you are the enabler for this relationship. You giving Aaliyah all the fucking rope in the world to hang herself and you at the same time, sweetheart, Okay? She done got some type of gentle award from some dude. And she knows she did because you done found the email. You done seen the email and read the email about her gentle award. Okay, gentle bump, whatever the fuck you want to call it. She done lied on numerous occasions. God knows. I'm. You know what? I hate a liar. I mean, like, I understand we all do have to lie sometimes to get ourselves out of a predicament that we really shouldn't have been in in the first place. And that's so, but when you constantly, 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 constantly lying about shit, then there's a problem. Like who the fuck want to be with somebody that's a constant fucking liar? Like seriously, let, let's be real about the shit. Like you a constant liar and you really expect me to take you serious. I can't believe a word you motherfucking saying. So I'm sorry, guys. I had to answer my phone. Um, it was my husband calling. So I'm not really sure what I said last, but the main thing with this whole topic with Alyssa is this. As long as you allow someone to dog you down, kick dirt on you, and trash you, it's never going to get any better. They're never going to respect you. They've already grown a tolerance to disrespecting you. They have built that wall up of disrespect to you. And no matter how hard you take a chisel, a hammer, a boulder to knock that shit the fuck down, bitch, it's not falling down. The only way to knock and get rid of the disrespect in your relationship with this girl, Leah, is to walk away. Bottom line, you know, a lot of times we have been in relationships that have so been so long and we become numb to it. When you become numb in a relationship and it's like you it's basically like you don't care, you've given up, there's nothing left. Why keep stagnating yourself in a relationship that's not going to get any better and you're numb to it? There's no feeling. You have no feeling in the relationship. So why continuously stay there? You know what I'm saying? It's hard sometimes to pack your shit up and leave and go find strength elsewhere. But the only strength that you're going to find right about now, Alyssa, is within yourself. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't have faith. Some people don't have faith in the greater God. Some people don't have faith in a lot of things. Some people don't even have faith in their own selves, okay? But the first thing that you need to do is try, is try. As hard as you've been trying to be with this girl, Leah, and to get her to communicate and stop cheating and lying. You've tried so hard. You tried for 10 fucking years. That's trying, bitch. You have passed, surpassed, tried, okay? But if you can dedicate 10 years of your life to trying to help someone else and to try to get someone else to do the right thing for you, then you can definitely try even harder to give your own self a breather, a break, and learn yourself. You know what I'm saying? No one has to be alone forever, but until you write within yourself, the best thing for you to do is to be alone. No one can make you happy. You can only find happiness when you 
can make your own self happy. My husband, he makes me happy, but you know what? That's because I make my own self happy too. If I was miserable and depressed and felt like shit, he's not going to be able to make me happy. I'm still going to feel like a miserable, depressed bitch, okay? A lot of times what I notice with people, they jump in from one relationship out the other because one is going bad. So they go to another relationship. And it, it, that's not the key. That shit, that shit don't work like that. It's, it's not supposed to be that way. We're not supposed to leave one toxic relationship to get into one another that we may feel is going to be good. Yes, true indeed. When you get into any relationship, it's always perfect. It's always fluffy in the beginning. That shit is bomb in the beginning. Because, I mean, like, listen, if you was to get in a relationship with somebody and automatically it starts off bad, you definitely going to step the fuck away and you're going to just be like, you know what, this ain't right for me. So, yes, a relationship always starts out great. Just like with you and Leah, it started out great. You both decided that you needed to get out of your parents' homes and things were good. But you also knew in the beginning that she was manipulative. Her friends didn't even want to fuck with her. Those were red flags right there. But you still gave it a chance. You still gave it an opportunity and you guys moved in together. Now here it is 10 years later and you're still with this trash bag because she's a trash bag. And you still on the outskirts. Bitch, you on the back burner. You way on the back burner, okay? You so far back, you out the house. You ain't even in the kitchen no more, okay? You somewhere else. And you know what? When somebody puts me somewhere the fuck else, way the fuck back there, you know what, bitch? Well, since you put me way the fuck back there to where um, you can't even see me like that, I'm going to make it my business to be way the fuck back there, out of sight and out of mind, and I'm not going to fuck with you no more. You don't own this bitch nothing. You don't owe her no kind of explanation to why you leave leaving. You don't owe her anything, okay? What you do owe... And who you do owe is yourself. And you do owe your mom who has passed away. Because do you think that this lady that is looking down on you would want to see you going through this? You hurt because your mom has passed away. You hurt because you feel like the last thing you told your mother is that you may be gay or bisexual. You know what? Th that may feel like a hurt to you. But it's really not. It's being honest. And it's the best policy is to be honest. And when I just said the best thing, the best policy is honesty. And your friend, your so-called girlfriend, she can't even do that. You think that she's your friend. You think that, that she's your loved one. You think that she's your only family. This bitch ain't none of those. She's nothing but the devil sitting next to you on the couch or masturbating on the other side of the bed. She's one who needs to be gotten rid of. And if you can't put her out and get the car, sweetheart, some things we got to walk away from. Take what belongs to you, meaning your belongings, and pack them up and leave. Sometimes we got to walk away from things materialistic shit at that most. If she want to have that car, let the bitch have it because she could pay the car insurance. She could pay the gas. She could pay whatever kind of repairs needed. Let the bitch have it. Let her pay the rent, the electric bill, the gas bill, the cable bill, whatever bills, let her have it all. That's how you get somebody real good. You bite their asses just like that. Karma is a motherfucker, okay? Karma is really a motherfucker. And the one thing that I would do is I would pack my shit up and I would find me a place to stay, like a shelter to get myself back together, get me some mental help, get me some therapy help, get me into my own place, okay? Get me some furniture. When you go into situations like this by getting help from shelters and things, they help you get an apartment. They help you get furniture. They help you get clothing. They help you get food. They help you get things that you need, all right? As long as you are around this girl, Aaliyah, the only thing you're going to need, sweetheart, is mental health, okay? So take it from me. It's time to leave. Pack your things up and walk away. You don't owe that bitch Leah a motherfucking thing, Alyssa. You don't owe her no explanation. She has given you enough turmoil in your lifespan. Because 10 years is enough. That's a motherfucking, what is it, a decade or a century? One of them. That's enough time that you have given somebody, you have allowed somebody to fucking make you miserable for 10 motherfucking years. That's a long time to allow somebody to make you miserable. 10 years? That 10 years add up to being like 20 because when you miserable, that shit seem like it just drag and it just be longer. When you happy, time goes by fast. But when you miserable, that shit seem like a drag. So let's just multiply that. That's like 20 years, bitch.
you've 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 wasted 20 years and to let yourself go because of another human being let me tell you something sweetheart first of all the pictures that you showed me of yourself i don't know where you let yourself go but your girlfriend leah that bitch been let herself go she's not worthy of your time and i'm sorry i don't i don't really like to do the judgmental thing on looks but when you dirty and nasty on the inside and then you still dirty on the outside, then bitch, you ain't even worth my time. OK, now that's when I'm going to look at you. Like if you are a nasty, cold human being, like mean and nasty to me, but you still kind of ugly or how, how about this? But yeah, if you nice and sweet as pie, but your looks ain't all that, then I'm going to overlook all of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, she may look like Shrek, but she's so sweet that her attitude and just her personality and her being makes her look like a goddess. You know what I'm saying? I like to be around people that are nice. But when you mean and nasty and you ugly on the outside too, girl, bye. Your whole looks will be fucking judged, talked about, and thrown to the trash like shit. And I'm sorry, sweetheart, but you are beautiful. You are absolutely gorgeous. And for you to allow someone to treat you like trash is ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Have some self-worth, some self-esteem, some pride, sweetheart. Make your mama proud and leave this bitch to fuck alone. Because as long as you stay there, you gonna just endure more pain. And how about this? Better yet. You ever see that show called Snap where the woman just be in a relationship and they just keep enduring all types of abuse and abuse and then they finally snap and they end up killing that motherfucker or hurting them real bad to where they be put in a situation that they really couldn't have and shouldn't have been in you know what i'm saying we don't want and i know i don't want you Alyssa, to be in a situation where you have constantly given it your all you know what i'm saying where you have just snapped and you have given it your all and then you do something to this girl you know what i'm saying yeah maybe sometimes people do deserve hurt and pain but you know what? Those people that deserve the hurt and pain, when you really, really think about it, they're really not worth your time and effort. Why hurt somebody that deserves it and then put yourself in a situation because of this person? She's a loser, an abuser, a liar, manipulator. She's just a disgusting person. She's fucking pond scum. And I'm sorry, but pond scum, we don't fucks with. Okay? So... Listen to what I'm saying, and I'm pretty sure everybody down below is going to leave the comment. You guys know this was a long one, so that's the only reason why it was one email. And I was happy to have read this because, you know, it did break me down because I hate to see somebody go through something. Even if I don't know them personally, I could feel the pain just from reading it. You know what I'm saying? And I could just see where she's coming from. She has been through a lot. She started thinking that she was somebody else. She's been through mental issues and it's hard for her. Like it seriously is hard for her. And I hate to see anybody suffer from any type of pain. You know what I'm saying? So if you guys ever feel like you're in a relationship with anybody, male or female, who is verbally abusing you, or they just really don't, you feel like they don't care and they're not giving it their all to you and you're giving it more, then you need to fucking sit down and think about things. You need to think about who you are as a person who you want to be as a person, who you want to be with as a person. You know what I'm saying? Like happiness is not given. You have to learn to love yourself and give yourself happiness before you allow anybody else to make you happy. You know what I'm saying? There are a lot of women out there that just jump from one pan to the other and to like, listen, but you just going to get burnt up if you keep jumping from another pan to another pan. Learn to be alone sometimes. I mean, alone is a good thing. Trust me. I am the most introverted person there is. I like to be alone, but sometimes I do need a good conversation and company and I have my husband for that, but I'd rather be by myself if I can't be in a relationship that's healthy for me. And you see that I have already been through that and have done through that. You know what I'm saying? And I have learned to cope with things and learn me as a person better. And he is the same thing. But, you know, don't sit around and wait for a person to change after so long, because in reality, they're not going to change. This is who the person is. This is them. And this is their character. And they're not going to change. This is who the fuck they are. And when they ever do decide to change, it's going to be on their own terms. You can never change someone. You cannot manipulate someone that is already a manipulator and doesn't want to change. You have to change yourself, meaning you have to change the environment and the person that you're with and the surroundings and leave things alone. Being alone is a good thing because it allows you to sit there and just basically think, 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 you know what I'm saying? Think to yourself. 
talk to yourself. Learn things about yourself. Bottom line, don't be in abusive relationships, anybody. If you need help, there are so many different organizations out there that can help you. But the first thing that you have to do is help yourself. So on that note, I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments below. And you know what I'm saying? Shit. Learn to love yourself, honey.